there is a huge growing community of Aptera fans, and that's why they have over 42,000 paid reservations and growing, not shrinking, unlike... This is one thing I omitted to say the first time he mentioned this in my version one. So I can say it now. 42,000 reservations are only there because it's usually $70 to reserve, which is about half a tank of fuel. It's such chicken feed that people just go, well, I might as well reserve one on the really off chance that it might happen. And it's money that they can throw away. They spend that on a meal. Lucid, who had under 30,000 reservations when they were reporting those numbers. And by the way, that's like 30,000 reservations on vehicles that are not profitable. Aptera, way easier to become profitable because it's so much cheaper to build. It requires so much smaller battery packs. Like their entry-level model in particular has 25 kilowatt hours. That's less than a quarter of the number of cells that Lucid needs on each of their vehicles. But even so, the Aptera has more demand than the Lucid does. Probably the same story with Lordstown, to be honest, given how weak the specs are on the endurance truck really just meant for fleet buyers but the aptera is appealing to fleet buyers as there has been some deposits put down for fleet orders and that deposit for fleet orders was very suspect we don't know who the company is or how many they ordered it is as vague as just about everything else it looks like it was some sort of a bogus transaction if there's ever been proper transactions at all and it's more desirable to everyday consumers because a lot of driving is done with just one or two people in the car. And people, I think, too often try to bunch the three-wheeler market into, okay, well, the Aptera is just going to be addressable to people who buy motorcycles or people who buy two-seaters. Whereas the truth is, similar to Tesla in the early days, I don't think we truly understand what the market demand is of the Aptera just yet because there's never been a vehicle that is self-powered before. We've never made a motorcycle or a three-wheeler or an EV that... That's not true. It's a strange definition of self-powered because when EVs came out, people could charge them up with their solar panels on the house roof and that was pretty much self-powered. It wasn't powered by going to a fuel station and paying for petrol or gas, as they say in America. It was powered by the sun, which is essentially just one slight step away from direct sunlight on the roof of the vehicle. It's on the roof of the house, that's all. And you plug it into the house and the solar goes straight from the solar panels on the roof into the batteries in the EV. The only thing is, is that when you drive the EV, your only way to get more of that self-power is to go back home. There's not much in it. And solar directly from the roof of the vehicle is not viable. There are many, many YouTube videos that will tell you that it's not worth putting solar on a moving vehicle. It doesn't need to be plugged in, hypothetically. Yes, you can plug it in if you want to, but Aptera, in my head, is the first of its kind. A solar electric vehicle that can get 30 to 40 miles of range per day just by sitting in sunlight. That's never existed. That's never been on the market, where you have a vehicle that is hypothetically free to charge, free to drive around, and now you just have, like, tire maintenance and windshield wiper fluid, essentially, to worry about. There's never been another vehicle on the market with cost of ownership that low, not to mention the starting price of the Aptera being incredibly low anyway. So sure, it doesn't qualify for the federal tax credit, which is a bit of a bummer, but with vehicles, you have to factor in cost of ownership because people do not buy them and just let them sit around on their property. People buy vehicles to ride in them and drive them around and use them. And if one vehicle costs nearly nothing to drive around and another vehicle, whether it's electric or gas, has an operating expense, and we've seen in states like California, electricity can be very expensive, like back home we're paying still close to 100 bucks a month for electricity on our very efficient Model 3, and with the rising cost of grid access, there will still probably be more price increases on electricity in the future. I think there's going to be a market, and there's going to be a ton of demand for an affordable vehicle that is capable of charging itself, which is why I don't think you can compare the Aptera to other vehicles on the road. Not to You can compare the Aptera to every other electric vehicle. If you own solar cells on your roof, you get charging for free. I have six and a half kilowatts on my roof. I've got a BYD803 and I charge it during the day. And my phone tells me that uh, most of the time, because I'm in sunny Brisbane, the solar is putting all the power into my BYD and it's free from the sun. 
there are indirect costs. The solar panels won't last forever and I'll have to replace them with a cost. But essentially, it's free. Just as free as having them on a roof of a car because they don't last forever either. And there's always that long-term indirect cost involved. But when it comes to being free from the sun, all electric cars are free from the sun if you use your solar in the daytime. Your house holds solar on your roof. It's free from the sun. It's substantially safer than most other motorcycles or three-wheelers out there thanks to their massive crumple zone, their side impact protection from the rounded body and... It's not substantially safer. They only claim it to be, but they won't prove a thing. They are without any side airbags, so they're substantially less safe than most vehicles with side airbags. This massive crumple zone, did he say massive? Uh, this massive crumple zone is 700 millimetres. It is one of the shortest crumple zones in any vehicle. So I don't know how he's passing these things off as facts. They're not. Not only is that crumple zone short, it is super low. And so if you run into the back of a decent lorry, that's English, but call it truck. If you run in the back of any truck that has any little bit of height, that truck is going to go right through your windshield into your face before the crumple zone hits anything that will crumple. The incredible durable carbon composite that the body is made out of far stronger than that of what most cars are made of on the outside. This is nonsense also. They made a composite body by hand and it was pretty strong. But then they went to CPC and are making the vehicles out of a toothpaste type material that they call carbon fiber but is nowhere near the strength of either normally made carbon fiber or the composite material they first started claiming was strong. It's not strong and it's not proven to be. That's the main thing. Not shown to be. You have to just believe the snake oil salesman. And this guy, he's just in with a snake oil salesman. You're getting snake oil from him. Outside aluminum or steel, which dents and folds up when in an impact, their forged carbon redistributes that impact a lot better. So they've got a safety emphasis, they've got an efficiency emphasis, and they've got an affordability emphasis. This has a ton of demand. So I that carbon fiber is, although weaker than a motorcycle helmet, has the same property of a motorcycle helmet in that once it's been dropped, it has lost all its structural integrity. And it's the same for the Aptera. Once it's had a knock of any reasonable impact, it will lose all its structural integrity. So it could be driving down the road and just fall in two at any given moment. I don't want to hear people say that, no, the company's going to fail because no one's going to buy these things. We have statistical evidence that that is not the case. But I'm not trying to say here that Aptera is guaranteed to succeed. I'm just saying... You have statistical evidence that nobody has bought one. And that's the main point. Deal in facts, not what is going to be. I think that it's probably going to take longer than what we would like. Although Aptera has told us that the ATVM loan that they've applied for from the federal government is enough funds to secure everything they need for mass production. But, of course, a loan is not as ideal as just a straight cash investor, which is why they're still working really hard with investment groups and trying to secure enough cash so that they can accelerate the production of the Aptera and not... The loan is no better or worse than investors because the loan has an interest rate and the investors want a return on their investment. But either way, they both cost extra money and there is no truth to the fact that investment money is preferable to a loan, particularly government loans, which are usually low interest have to wait around for government loans because those take longer and they're a bit more problematic than just having cash in the hand. But that's something else I really respect and admire about Aptera is unlike other brands that like to IPO and go public before production has actually started, they've tried to keep it semi-public where everyday people can invest, but because they're not listed on the stock exchange, their stock price is not constantly fluctuating. Their stock is locked in still at $10.50, which I think keeps them a lot more honest. 
you know, before production has started, I don't think they want to come across as we just need to push positive narratives so that our stock goes up. And that's how you run into the Trevor Milton situation where he was telling lies and being fraudulent in interviews in order to keep the stock price up. When you keep the company kind of private, but allow in certain investors through certain resources like Republic and Insurance, that allows the stock price to stay the same. So the company is not motivated to push tons of positive narratives all the time to try to artificially inflate the stock price. No, because the stock price is just staying in place for them. And I think it always gets a little fishy when a company that hasn't delivered a product yet is publicly traded because now they care a lot more about their public perception. And He's waffling on and he's got wild ideas. And I still can't find places to stop him. He's just at 100 miles an hour. Where do I start? I have to think back now, the last minute of guff that he's viewed. They never got close to getting the ATVM loan the first time they applied for it. And for all intents and purposes, it doesn't appear that they're any closer this time. It really appears like they're going to be knocked back on the loan. I'll give one reason. They have more of the silly trike built overseas than they did last time around. The CPC body parts that have to be shipped halfway around the world to be assembled in California adds too much overseas content for the ATVM loan application to pass. The Accelerate program kicked all their early fanboys in the teeth and they were gullible enough to think that their losing their places in the line for getting one was a better deal. In fact, everything the snake oil salesmen pass off, the gullible fanboys swallow. They have promised to soon do the IPO, and they have not said that they need to produce a vehicle for sale before they go IPO. But this guy here, his interpretation is that they intend to do it after they produce a vehicle. They just make promises and never deliver on promises, that's all it is. The fanboys get the idea in their heads that they are serious about becoming a company because they talk about an IPO. But they're not serious about becoming a company. They only talk about getting an IPO just so that they can get more money out of fools. Their stock price is not constantly fluctuating. Their stock is locked in still at $10.50, which I think keeps them a lot more honest. You know, Honesty is one of the last things you get out of these snake oil salesmen. They bought millions of shares for a cent each, or a penny, you might say. They bought millions, and since then, they have gradually put the price or the value up to $10.50, so that whenever they fold, they will take all the investment money from everybody else that paid $10.50 a share, or somewhere in between, and they will get $10.50 for every cent that they bought a share for, and they will rake in millions. That's the... Probably the most core issue of why I think they're a Ponzi scheme outside of the fact that they're building something that does not work. The machine does not work as far as I can tell. There's no evidence of it. It looks like it works. It's fake enough to look like it works, but it does not work. It won't fit the needs of the driving public. Before production has started, I don't think they want to come across as we just need to push positive narratives so that our stock goes up. And that's how you run into the Trevor Milton situation where he was telling lies and being fraudulent in interviews in order to keep the stock price up. When you keep the company kind of private, but allow in certain investors through certain resources like Republic and Insurance, that allows the stock price to stay the same. So the company is not motivated to push tons of positive narratives all the time to try to artificially inflate the stock price no because the stock price is just staying in place for them and i think the stock price has risen from a cent a share to ten dollars fifty a share how on earth has he got this idea in his head that it stays the same there's no guarantee that it'll even stay at ten dollars fifty I think it always gets a little fishy when a company that hasn't delivered a product yet is publicly traded because now they care a lot more about their public perception and they are more motivated to push false narratives like Nikola did so that they can artificially boost their stock price and say anybody can buy this. No, Eptera is being a bit more smart about it even though Chris Anthony has run several brands in the past that went public. He knows how to take a company public and he intends, I think, in time to make Aptera public once production has started. 
started, but right now they understand it's just not the right time for that. And they're comfortable with just doing the accelerator program, which has gone amazingly well, and they're on their path to actually the accelerator program has not gone amazingly well they are not on the path the accelerator program has had to be extended for way longer than it was supposed to last it has originally wanted to raise 50 million dollars and they've they've downgraded that to 20 million dollars 20 million dollars won't get them anywhere near the ability to produce even if they get it well, they probably got it already, but they burn cash at the rate of 50 to $60 million per annum, and $20 million isn't even going to keep them afloat. They are in big trouble. And I have plenty of videos to show that these snake oil salesmen are far from honest.